Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped. So today I am going to be reviewing the Aston Martin DB11. Now you may well have seen my previous video where I got to drive this to Bewley to the Simply Aston Martin event. So I thought while I was here, I would take you around the outside, do a full review. We're now going to take it for a drive across the forest, put it through its paces and kind of talk about what it's like to drive on the road. So I think this is going to be a good one. Let's go. bit of a look at some of the tech on the car so the the standout design feature for the DB11 is this kind of straight in the front wing okay and it's got a functional job not just an aesthetic job so basically when you're at high speed you've got a high pressure buildup in the front wheel arch and these veins allow that pressure to be released a bit like I guess a GT3 RS has that on the top of the wing but in the DB11 uh, the airflow comes out of here and underneath here there are little bumps called curlicues that create or induce a vortex and that basically the vortex takes the air down the side of the car and it comes into this intake just here so the air comes into this intake and comes out and this is the clever bit it comes out of here okay and into here and ultimately comes out to this top part of the of the boot and that creates effectively an air spoiler or downforce and the, the downforce created is, is about the same as the wing on the back of a GT8 so it kind of just shows you how effective it is but you don't get the aesthetics of this big wing on the top and I just think that is brilliant. The interior of the DB11 is simply stunning. The stitching work on the mega supportive sports seats is a work of art. A 177 inspired steering wheel a new dash layout are a huge step up for Aston interiors. The centre console borrows its tech from Mercedes and finally gives the quality and toys cars from the Gaiden factory deserve. Bang & Olufsen tweeters rising out of the dash bring a sense of theatre. The 5.2 litre twin turbo V12 produces 600 brake horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. Zero to 60 takes just 3.9 seconds and the DB11 will hit the magic double ton. Okay, so another interesting fact about the DB11 is this clamshell bonnet is a single press piece of aluminium, the largest of any car in manufacturing. If we wander around this side, so this is a launch edition car, so here we've got the 5.2 litre twin turbo V12, the first Aston to be turbocharged. It's kicking out something like 600 horsepower, but it's a launch edition car, so the first thousand cars have been finally inspected by the main man himself, Dr. Dr. Andy Palmer. And I reckon it's also the only car with a soft closed bonnet. I think that's genius. So let's take this baby out on the road to see what it can do. And in order to do that, I'm following the Vitor Vantage S Roadster that I reviewed at the back end of last year. And that's being driven by James at Aston Martin, who I have to thank massively for inviting me to drive this today because it's been a very special day. But we're in review mode now. Now, a couple of things about this car from the drive down. It is such a great cruiser. You can sit on the motorway at ridiculous uh, speeds. Not that we did that, obviously, coming down because we were very, very... Uh, uh... There's a number of driving modes in this car. There's a GT mode, which we used on the way down, which is your kind of touring mode. You've then got um, sport mode, which 
gives you a little bit more poke, gives you a little bit more noise, and then Sport Plus mode, which gives you maximum noise and no traction or half traction control. I'm not going to be using that today. I might put it in it for a little while. And then you've also got um, three different suspension settings, normal, sport, and race, and we're going to put it into sport suspension mode, um, which is really nice. It's just that kind of fine balance. On the drive down on the motorway, this car kind of showed its true capability for me as a long distance tourer. It was really, really impressive. It kind of just sat there at pretty high speed and you just didn't realize how fast you were going. Very, very impressive. But what I love about this car is that when you stick the um, car into one of the sport modes and you use the flappy paddle gearbox, it's absolutely brilliant. And I think this is going to be fun because we're following James. He's in a very fast car. He's a very good driver as well, which is going to be interesting. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so lovely, lovely feel through the steering. This road's pretty bumpy, as I said. I've Got it. Oh, that gearbox on the downshift is just mega. Oh. Cows! <laughs> so I have a feeling this is going to be one of my worst reviews ever because this car's just leaving me speechless. I'd start to think about what I'm gonna say, and you have to kind of really think about it because you just gather speed in this car like there's no tomorrow. It's so impressive that the gearbox is really, really good. It's so much, um, I guess, I love the Sports Shift 3 gearbox once you learn how to drive it. If you've seen my V12 Vantage S Roadster, in fact, the car that's in front, I'll put the, um, a clip up to that film. But this has got the 8-speed ZF and it's absolutely on it. It's really, really lovely. Um, the change-up paddles are fixed to the steering column, so they're not on the back of the steering wheel. That's the first time I've driven a car with that and I actually quite like it. Um, it certainly adds to the sense of occasion. So I need to just have a bit of a chat about the tech in this car because this tech comes straight from Daimler. So um, for the first time, um, an Aston Martin has a really good infotainment system. The sat nav's really, really good. The controls are very, very familiar. If you've got a Mercedes, you'll be familiar with those. Uh, and I really, really like that. It kind of steps the car up and puts it in a place where I think it should be. Um, because I think the, the sort of, um, that media console, media center in older Aston Martins um, is always a bit of a disappointment really. But then these cars are all about driving. But this is really up there from a technology point of view. good I just have this horrible picture in the back of my head youtuber crashes DB11 and I don't want that to happen so I'm being very very careful but it's really impressive Okay, so <laughs> this car, oh my goodness me. I've waited so long to review the DB11 and I had so many ideas in my head about what I was gonna say and how I was gonna do it and it's just all gone out the window completely. And the, the really cool thing is normally when I do a review, I'd be out on my own and I'd kind of have the time to think about shots and that kind of stuff. Whereas with this, I'm actually following someone and I'm just gonna take you along. I've got a. Vito Vantage S Roadster in front of me. And I... Oh, what a lovely bit of road. 
This is a good day to do a car review, I've decided. Downshifts are really great, actually. And this road's pretty bumpy, but the suspension's just so competent. You've got a lot of feel, and you have to kind of feed the power in reasonably gently, but... Oh, yes. And then you get on a loud pedal, and it's just <laughs> biblically quick. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, indeed. A very, very lovely car, this. I'm in love. So we're gonna we're doing a bit of trail filming. We got James up front, hopefully filming some nice shots. This little bit of twisty road here is absolutely mega. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> Now that's where this car comes alive. That is mega. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I've stopped being cool a very long time ago. Believe me, if you think you can drive this car, be cool at the same time. It's very, very difficult. What's really great about it is that little twist of bends. We weren't actually going that fast, but the car felt so composed and going from corner to corner, from lock to lock, from weight transferring across the chassis, it just didn't get upset by it at all. And I just think that is massively impressive. That's really, really impressive. And I just love this car to bits. On the road, GT Tourer, amazing. On this twisty stuff, driving today across the new forest in the bright sunshine, it doesn't get any better than this. I've had the best day ever on Petroped, I think. We've had a brilliant day today at Simply Aston Martin, driving down in the convoy, but getting to drive the car and put it through its paces like this. Wow, very special. what when you put it in the sport plus mode it backs the traction control off quite a lot so you get a bit more playfulness at the back but it opens up the valves in the exhaust and you just get the most intoxicating noise it just sounds wicked however I've just not got the confidence to drive it like that hard in a car that's not mine and that costs nearly two hundred thousand pounds but I can imagine once you kind of get used to that that that's the mode you would drive it in the kind of sport plus in the sport suspension setting. Here we go. Oh yeah. See, I'm getting surge. I'm getting surge from the back there, all the way through third and fourth. I have my foot buried into the carpet. It just keeps going and going. If you want to know what it's like to drive a really, really fast car, just the look on my face back then probably was enough. That is outrageous. We've got a few uh, uh, traffic issues on the M27, which is kind of par for the course, really. But it is quite interesting. Once you get back on the motorway and you drop, put it back in the in the drive mode, so you're not on the flappy paddles. In Sport Plus, it's still very responsive to change gear, blip on the downshift, so it's in that kind of gear that you need, and, and I quite like that. Um, but yeah, the the gearbox is really very impressive in this car. Well, in fact, the whole car is really impressive, to be fair. Um, sat nav, uh, media entertainment, brilliant. The driving position's brilliant. The seats are beautiful. I'm struggling to find anything I really don't like about the car, apart from the fact it's not mine. Uh, but it really is a very, very special car. There is one thing to say, and that is, if you buy a DB11, especially if it's in this beautiful orange paintwork, expect lots of people to stare at you when they drive past because we're getting so many looks and admiring glances and we've had a couple of cameras stuck out the window and pictures taken so you know if you want to go you know undercover maybe a db11 isn't the car for you but i quite like it. it's quite cool so as we head home from the new forest 
What are my thoughts and impressions of this car? Well, it's been a very, very special day and one I will remember fondly for a very long time. I've wanted to drive this car since I first saw the kind of, you know, pictures in the press and the launch car videos and those types of things and it's just not disappointed at all. It's absolutely brilliant. And it's got this split personality. You stick it in GT mode on a motorway like we are now and it just cruises like no car I've ever been in before. It's so smooth, so quick. You could cover ground immensely fast in this car. Um, you know, it's got, it's a two plus two, but we've had little kids sitting in the back today. You could certainly get little people in the back. The boot's pretty big. Um, and, and it just ticks that GT Cruiser box like not many cars I can think of, it's right up there. But then you stick it into Sport or Sport Plus mode, you go to the paddles and it just changes personality completely into a real sporty handful of a car. I mean, don't get me wrong, you have to be on it with this car, but it's not too intimidating. And we've driven it pretty quickly today, um, as you will have seen in the video. Uh, and it's just got that balance and poise, it's absolutely superb. So I, it's just very, very cool. And I kind of think you probably, by the expression on my face, realize I've enjoyed driving the car very much. I have to say some massive thank yous, and I need to say thank you to the guy who's driving the V12 Vantage S Roadster in front of me. Um, I need to say thank you to James at Aston Martin Chichester and all the guys at Aston Martin Chichester and the Harwood Group. And they've supported my channel for a long time now, giving me access to some amazing cars. And when I got the email from James a few weeks ago saying, uh, would you like to drive a DB11 to the New Forest in a convoy of Aston Martins? I didn't have to think very quickly before I kind of went, yes. Uh, and it's been a very, very special day. So thank you massively. Anyway, we're, we're not too far from our home now. I'm sorry I haven't managed to get a few more angles and different shots, but we kind of had to film on the way home, so it was a bit restricted as to what we could do, but I still think we've hopefully got some good footage. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done so, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. As I've said before, the more subscribers I get, the more access to cars like this I can get and bring to you. So anyway, guys, I will see you on the next video. You take care, guys. Drive safe. Oh, I love this car!